Rebuilding a Bernac Vulcan model steam toy, part 21. Starting to make a flywheel for my Super Vulcan by rough turning a small piece of scrap steel bar. Drilling and reaming the centre hole and enlarging the holes in the engine frame. I don't know where this piece of metal came from, possibly from a scrapyard. Many years ago I used to go to a scrapyard where T.S. Harrison, who were the manufacturers of Harrison lathes, used to tip their scrap. Even though I've had this piece of very unusual looking steel bar for a very long time, I seem to remember that that's where it came from. I need to turn this into this. A finished flywheel for my Super Vulcan, which is really a copy of the original Vulcan flywheel, but it's in steel, not alloy. To make the job easier, to rough turn the piece of steel, I'm using my Smart and Brown lathe because it has a very large chuck which easily accommodates the diameter of this piece of steel. And just in case some viewers are thinking, well, it's all right for you with your Smart and Brown lathe, but I've only got a small Myford, how can I do this? The answer is fairly simple. Just fit the external jaws into your Myford chuck and you will be able to hold this satisfactorily. I'm just using my Smart and Brown lathe because it's quicker. The first thing to do is to evaluate what this piece of steel is like, and it seems to be okay. Not all pieces of steel are equal, but this one should work well. The video, by the way, is now running at 400%. There's a limit to how much I can take watching a video about a lathe tool moving across the middle of a piece of steel. But I do appreciate that some viewers like this, so what I'm going to do is stop talking in a while and just let you watch the process. It's sort of hypnotic and soothing in a perverse sort of way. I'm not looking for a perfect finish at this stage. The speeds and feeds are not perfect for that sort of thing, but it's good enough to get through the work as quickly as possible and remove as much metal as quickly as possible. Here, I'm pulling the tool backwards, which seems to give a better finish anyway. The good news is this piece of steel is perfect for the job. I will show the finishing of this flywheel in another video and I'll be using my Boxford lathe for this, which is very much like the type of lathe you would find in the average model engineer's home workshop. Initially I didn't use any lubricant and the cutting tool, which is quite robust, is cutting very well indeed. I'm not facing all the way across the front because I want to end up with a bit of a spigot sticking out of the middle. And if you want to know why, please rewind to the part where I show the finished flywheel. It is strangely satisfying pulling the tool away from the centre, and it does seem to cut better and give a better finish. I think that is possibly because this side of the carbide tip hasn't done quite as much work as the other side. One of the problems that I have, amongst others, is I cannot do something for too long before I get bored. That's why I've decided to start turning the outer diameter. I use my digital caliper to measure the diameter of the original flywheel, and I'm just going to duplicate that. During this sequence, you will see me using the caliper occasionally to check the diameter. You may have noticed that the sound changes when the tool is cutting. That's because the lathe is slowing down. And the reason for this, I always keep the belt slack. Yes, I know this is really bad practice, but once upon a time I didn't do this and I completely decimated a tool post, smashed it to pieces whilst parting off. And ever since then I thought, well, I think I'll just slacken the belts a bit. If the belt was tight, I could easily take a much deeper cut. I have taken half an inch off in one cut using back gear in the past. In no time at all, the digital caliper confirms that the external diameter is very slightly larger than I need it to be to allow for some finishing cutting later on in the Boxford lathe. Here we go again, more facing down to the centre boss. I'll leave you with this bit, it's very much more of the same. I have to show it as it's part of the process. So I'm going to stop talking and drink my tea and watch the video like you are doing.
Once I'd faced up to the spigot to make it the correct size, I realised that I needed to turn more of the outer diameter. And that's what I'm doing here. That should do it, it looks about right. Now for something completely different, I'm going to drill a centre hole in the middle of the work. Followed by using a twist drill which is one imperial size less than 3 16 and I'm drilling quite a long way down into this piece of bar. In this clip I've really slowed the lathe down using back gear and with some lubricant and a reamer I'm cutting the hole to the finished diameter. When reaming, it's quite important not to go too fast. If you go too fast, it will rattle about and the hole will be oversized. And in this case, I do not want that to happen. The 3 16 of an inch diameter shaft needs to be a really good fit in this hole. You can't see it in this clip because it's not magnified enough, but when I look closely, the hole in the center is very well finished. Time to see if the piece of metal that I'm going to use for the crankshaft fits, and it does, it's a piston fit. I'm quite pleased with this. It's also very oily, so it slides in and out easily too. Now for a bit of brutality on the workbench. This is the engine frame with its oscillating cylinder. And once again I'm using one imperial drill size less than 3 16 to enlarge the hole, followed by the reamer once again. I'm using my DeWalt electric drill for this, which is a great machine. This battery powered drill has three speeds and I've set it to the lowest speed, once again so that the holes that I'm reaming do not become oversized. After doing this and cleaning off all the swarf, the crankshaft is a perfect fit in the holes. I'm really pleased with this. And on that note I'd like to say, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.